Damas y caballeros. We have swallowed all manner of poisonous certainties fed us by our parents and school teachers. If the race is to be freed from its crippling burden of good and evil, it must be psychiatrists who take the original responsibility. La declaración de Brock Chisholm ejemplifica la remetida psiquiátrica directa contra nuestro sistema escolar. They actually said the purpose was social control, not to pass on knowledge. Not to give him something so that he can go into the world of work. En 1950, psiquiatras y psicólogos de todo el mundo se reunieron en la Casa Blanca para proponer una reorientación total del sistema público escolar. The White House Conference on Mental Health in the 1950s was a landmark that served to bolster the idea that schools would serve their communities better. In the, as mental health clinics than they would as uh, institutions of learning. In the early 60s, the world of psychiatry started to really go places in this country, little by little. It came into our schools, our educational system. Y para 1965 se convirtió en ley. Se les dio luz verde a los psiquiatras para que etiquetaran y drogaran a los estudiantes al por mayor. A child is labeled ADD or ADHD the minute he can't uh, sit still for a uh, 10, 15 minute period of time, uh, or he talks constantly, or ignores the teacher completely, that will get him and earn him in the ADD or ADHD label. In 1987, se etiquetaba libremente a los niños con el trastorno del déficit de atención e hiperactividad (TDAH). En un año, se diagnosticó a 500.000 niños americanos con este trastorno. Para 1994, esa cantidad se había elevado a 4.4 millones. Como respuesta a la alarma pública generalizada por la aparente epidemia de enfermedad mental, los Institutos Nacionales de Salud, financiados por el gobierno de Estados Unidos, reunieron un panel de prominentes médicos y psiquiatras para explicar a los padres y educadores exactamente qué era el TDAH. I would like uh, any member of the panel to describe uh, a typical ADHD in terms of symptomatology. Mark, would you like to, since you see them in your practice. The, the, there, I mean, I think the, the panel has been frank, and you know the difficulties here are immense in terms of of uh, um, these. I mean, <clears throat> ah, it is hard. It, it, it's very hard to know how to answer this question. There, um, they cannot. You know, even when. Um, uh, they are as if driven by a motor. There are some good clinical descriptions. Um, and I think, you know, we, uh, I, I do, I think the pro part of the problem is the profession keeps changing the diagnosis. At this time, we do not have a diagnostic test for ADHD. Therefore, the validity of the disorder continues to be a problem. Pero esta escandalosa admisión no detuvo a los psiquiatras de las escuelas. Dos años después, el número de estudiantes americanos diagnosticados con el TDAH se elevó a 6 millones. Hoy, a 20 millones de niños en el mundo se les ha etiquetado con algún tipo de trastorno de aprendizaje, un diagnóstico a menudo hecho en cuestión de minutos. We would sit behind um, a two-way mirror um, along with the parents. We would then look at um, the child. We would like do small manipulative activities with them to see where their deficit was. Um, it was wrong what we were doing. We were looking at a five-minute glimpse of this child's life and saying, "Okay, here you go. Here's a little pill. Take it. You'll be fine." 
Esas pildoritas como Ritalin, Aderal y Concerta las clasifica la Administración para el Control de Estupefacientes de Estados Unidos como sustancias muy adictivas, igual que la cocaína, la heroína y la metanfetamina. Cuando estaba en el Ritalin, me hizo sentir totalmente diferente, como si no fuera quien era. Estaba flipando, estaba going crazy. I felt like I was out of it all the time, like I wasn't there, I wasn't human. You're just a zombie pretty much, not, you, you, you know, you do what you can and just to get by and just don't do anything extra. My mother never teased me, but she thought I really had ADHD and I was wrong, and I had something wrong with me. So I thought she'd feel bad and feel sorry for me if I died, but then again I, I thought that She um, would miss me a lot, and I also love her um, a little more than I wanted to kill myself. And so I stopped, I stopped when I realized that. La abundancia de medicamentos recetados creó una nueva fuente de ingreso para los chicos, vender sus medicamentos a sus compañeros. It's called Kitty Cocaine. They take the Ritalin and they just repackage it and they sell it on campus to the kids. Because it's like speed. I figured like if I was gonna do drugs, I might as well make it worth it. And I ended up doing street drugs, and then ended up getting into it really bad. We're looking at um, marijuana and other things as being gateway drugs, and actually the the so-called medications are a greater gateway drug. The Ritalin drugs are backfiring big time because if the child is already disruptive, and he takes cocaine. He's going to be a lot more disruptive after he's taken it. It is not going to calm him down. Boom! She got on the drugs and her personality changed, her behaviors changed, it became erratic and dark and violent and uh, it, it was just a nightmare. He kept having adverse reactions, becoming very, very angry. He could not control his behavior. He couldn't control his temper. He was on five different psych meds, Prozac and um, lithium and Um, he was seven years old and he was unable to function. He would have rages and then crying and, and all kinds of um, just violent rages, grabbing knives and all of this. The list includes 15-year-old Kip Kinkle withdrawing from Prozac when he shot 22 classmates, killing two after murdering his mother and stepfather at his home in Springfield, Oregon. 18-year-old Jason Hoffman on Effexor and Selexa, and he opened fire at his California high school, wounding five. 15-year-old Sean Cooper on a mix of antidepressants when he shot students in Idaho. And 17-year-old Eric Harris on Luvox when he and partner Dylan Klebold killed 12 classmates and a teacher in the bloodiest school massacre yet, Columbine. Todo esto eclipsa la mismísima razón de que los niños acudan a la escuela en primer lugar para recibir una educación. Desde 1970, Estados Unidos ha caído del noveno al vigésimo octavo lugar en el mundo académico. Durante ese mismo periodo, el número de estudiantes americanos etiquetados con trastornos de aprendizaje se disparó y la venta de drogas para el TDAH se multiplicó 32 veces. Children don't ask for psychiatric drugs. Children don't ask to be diagnosed. They don't want to be called crazy. So you ask to ask the classic Roman question, legal question, cui bono, who benefits? The people who make the diagnosis. No olvidemos de nosotros, recordémonos, eh.